Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Gianluca Madri speaking from the Virtual Telescope Project, and I would like to show with the, this uh, quick uh, look how the Virtual Telescope works and basically how a given user, a remotely using our system, will uh, uh, actually see the system in operation so that you can have an idea about the experience you will have if you will try the Virtual Telescope yourself. Once you receive the, um, all the, the, need, the needed uh, keywords to enter, the password, I mean, uh, okay, also the server name, you have access to this one, to this screen, and here you have everything you need for fully remotely control the system. First of all, you are going to take the Planetarium Live software, uh, asking the telescope to go somewhere, okay? So basically we can point every place, every part of the sky, uh, namely everything about the horizon at a given time at the virtual telescope location that is uh, Ceccano in central Italy. The system is now uh, pointing the Orion constellation, but first of all I want to show you how we can uh, point something different, just pushing the number, the name, uh, just uh, writing the name of the object, and uh, I have, okay, there is a command to have this uh, little window of showing, and uh, for example I can ask the telescope to point Jupiter, planet Jupiter, and once I have finished the writing the name, and of course I can even click on Jupiter on the map if I know where Jupiter is, I will click on the Find button, and this way the system will show some basic information about Jupiter, then I will click on the green small telescope in the bottom of the object information window, and the system will ask me for confirmation before viewing the system, but that is what I want, and so let's click OK, and the system is viewing now. Meanwhile, I can even close the other window, and you can see that the white circle is running over the map, and that is where the telescope is pointing second after second, I mean in real time. And as the telescope was pointed the east of the meridian, and it is going to Jupiter, which is west of the meridian, we have to cross the polar star position. And now we are in the western part of the sky, and the telescope is going very fast to Jupiter. Okay, once we will reach Jupiter, the small window will close, and this means that the telescope has arrived. At this point, we leave the planetarium software, and we are going to um, handle the CCD camera thanks to the CCD soft, the other uh, software you see on uh, the bottom, uh, the bottom window bar. Okay, we are. We have a previous image, and uh, I'm going to close this. And of course. As uh, Jupiter is a very bright object, uh, I will uh, uh, check that the, a strong filter is uh, in line and uh, we are using here an H-alpha filter, which is uh, quite enough to kill the, most of the light coming from Jupiter, just leaving the one needed for the very sensitive camera. And of course, I will be using a very short exposure time, 0 0.05 seconds and I will ask the system to take a picture. Very easy, as you can see. After zooming, we are just shooting images. And here it is. This is a mid-resolution image. Here it is, the, the image of Jupiter. You can see uh, the satellites, okay, as well as uh, some uh, uh, odd pixels. They are typical with CCD devices. They are going away. But of course, Jupiter is there. I will crop around Jupiter and of course this is not uh, uh, always necessary, I just uh, want to do this just to concentrate uh, for this tutorial on the planet, and now I will switch to the full resolution. But before doing this, I would like to check if some details are visible. For this I will use the histogram window, just uh, uh, stretching uh, the histogram a bit to show details in the brightest part of the image. And as you can see, there are some very nice uh, visible details on the planet and uh, the bands are very very apparent, you know. So it is well worth to give uh, a try at full resolution. I changed the beam one by one now and here it is the planet 
and as you can see the resolution is quite good and uh, once again I'm just going to adjust the stretching manually of course and this is fantastic friends this is a very real-time image of Jupiter the system is working now in real time just to show a different contrast I, just, uh, I can use the blue filter of course the color of the filter will make details appearing with a different contrast based on their colors the H alpha filter is basically a red color and the blue one will show a very different aspect of the planet here it is the telescope is about 100 kilometers uh, south from my current um, position so I'm really using it remotely and uh, I must say that one kilometer is not different than 100, uh, 1000 and uh, 10,000 you know and here it is the planet now imaged through a blue filter and you can see that the bands are wonderfully visible now so let's ask the telescope to point something different for example let's try to point uh, the moon why not so let's ask the system to to point the moon if I use the minus uh, magnification lens of course the star map will show a larger portion of the sky so this time I can click on the moon I can still ask for the moon by name but I want to click on it clicking on it I will have some uh, basic details here once again the green telescope and then let's have the telescope to go there confirming slewing to that position now the moon is uh, approaching the meridian but it is still east of it so the telescope is going back once again crossing the polaris star you know i really love working this way through our idly technological system and uh, as you can see they are very very easy to use this is exactly what you could see if you were using the telescope now and uh, the system is still uh, working but in a few seconds we are I must say in a completely different part of the sky and we are sitting on the moon right now and I will need now that I am going back to imaging the H alpha filter as it is the stronger the strongest I have to handle the bright moon but this time I really want the full resolution image the very first attempt so be ready to see the moon in real time or this is working in real time wow not too bad at all friends but i would like to would be happy to show you uh, some details of course this is the center of the moon and the moon is quite is almost full in this time so i will try to switch to the planetarium uh, like uh, software and uh, I will zoom on the moon and then I will ask the system to to zoom to the border of the moon itself as we want to see some details and as this phase this is very very advanced we are I must say very close to the, um, the full moon you know okay let's point a more interesting region of the moon happy that uh, we are doing this in real time so that you can really see how a typical uh, session runs for our users so here it is a piece of moon in real time the thing is quite good of that you are really liking is and you can see that the system is, is, is taking images uh, back to back and the moon is moving you see because every image is showing uh, a small uh, a small drift along the horizontal axis and the moon is moving of course it's incredible and this is also a very nice document showing this and this is even, even give, telling us that we are really working in real time if you <laughs> if you wanted a uh, I would say uh, great proof for this 
Okay. Now let's try to point a completely different theme, for example, the Orion Nebula. And this time I will use the name for it, and it is known as Messier 42. So let's ask again the system to go there using the by name option, writing M42, then find. And it is somewhere at uh, 34 degrees above the horizon, and it is still rising. It is in the eastern part of the sky, so the same part of the moon at this moment. And please understand that with the full moon, we have uh, at, uh, more or less 5% of the full potential of the telescope. But still, the Messier 42 image should be a nice look. I really hope. And we are there. Just to give you an idea, uh, I want to show the full uh, the full map so that you can see that we are sitting in the right place here under the Orion belt. And now let's try to take a picture. I will remove the filter. I can even use filters with nebula, but with these very quick exposures, I, I mean, for uh, faint objects, I prefer to go without filters. So let's remove the filter. Let's adjust the focus because I removed it, uh, basically a piece of uh, glass. And uh, then let's ask the system to expose for five seconds this time. And we will be happy anyway with the mid resolution. And the system is now taking, changing the filter, you see, selecting the right one. In this case, no filter. And still having fun with the moon. Wow. The system is updating because we are running through the internet. And here it is, the amazing Orion Nebula with the, its beautiful uh, dark uh, areas and so on. So I really like this kind of experience. Once again, a new image is coming. So this is wonderful, friends. And of course, you can even see that there are some brightest stars somewhere inside, even if in five seconds they are already burning the CCD and the trapezium was very well visible. And now I'm, I'm really going now to point another thing. So let's ask the system, while still uh, being in Orion, to have at least a quick vision of the Orsted Nebula, which is a dark nebula, uh, apparent on uh, IC434, the name of the bright nebula, contrasting the Orsted Nebula, and uh, I'm going there. So we are really having fun in real time with the telescope, and the system has just moved there. Of course, we are now moving. This is a very funny image. <laughs> this is the strongest uh, proof I could show you that uh, we are working in real time. And uh, you can see that there, are, there is some phantom images from the trapezium. As uh, uh, they are very bright, but at every refresh, they are going away. And if you are skilled enough, you can see uh, a bit dark um, presence, and that is the an evidence of the um, orsed. But this time I will be use will be using the H alpha filter. So once again, uh, going back to the focus, I was using with the moon with the filters online, and. Uh, Okay, let me see what will happen with five seconds, or let me see also three by three. And let's use 10 seconds, for example. As uh, with the moon here, we will suffer even if the H alpha filter is actually killing a lot of moon. This is why I'm using it. Without the filter, you can barely see something if you know that there is something. Now I'm using the filter, I'm using also. Uh, lower resolution and uh, you can still see the ghosts 
for the trapezium and other very bright stars in the Orion Nebula, but even here you can easily see the presence of the the orchid. Okay, I would like just to let me let me try to do this if I can. Let me, let me try to refresh a few times the CCD using a very low resolution. This time I think that we are... Let me do another thing, just for fun, using in real time the, um, some auto dark here. And then we will conclude this tutorial. As uh, you have seen, it is very easy to use the virtual telescope. All our telescopes are uh, exactly using the very same approach. So, you can very likely see the presence of uh, the Earth's profile there, and uh, I was happy because this is saying that the system is working. So, I um, hope that uh, after seeing this very quick tutorial, you are convinced that the system is very easy to use, and uh, we have very many users, even very young ones, without any experience with the astronomy and telescopes, and after 30 minutes they are mastering the system. So, I was happy to share this with you, uh, Gianluca Masi from Virtual Telescope Project uh, invites you to visit uh, our website www.virtualtelescope.eu and have fun with the stars with us. See you!